Hey, hello there, it's me RJB for RJB TV, and welcome back to the channel. It's time for some Minchul against Mong. Get that out of the way, and let's look at the game. So we've got Minchul here on the bottom middle of the map, here on the pink magenta Terran up against Mong, who's on the top left corner of the map, here on the white Protoss. Speed up the first two minutes and see what both players are up to. This is one of the very last sets of Mong against Minchul that exists. It might be one of the very last sets they've played. Mong just hasn't played fastest in about a year now. It's been a while. It's been quite some time ago. He returned to his roots, back to the normal maps, trying to compete for the ASL title. And he's got into the ASLs. I think he got into a single round of 16 since this game. And I think he qualified every single time for the ASL. But it's just so damn difficult getting past a round of 24 these days with so many good players. And you also need a little bit of luck with what your group looks like. Well, Mintel here doing the irregular opening. Triple barracks on... I think this was an 8 supply, no, an 8 supply barracks into a supply depot. He moves out pretty early to rush onto Mong. Can Mong survive this one or is this one going to hurt him quite a bit? With these players, you never quite know whether an attack or a rush is going to hurt or whether it is not going to be painful. He's got a cannon there in the back and one Zeta there on the way. We've got some SCP there and Marine might build some bunkers. One Zeta there runs into Marines now forced to turn around. Mong playing it a little bit risky here but not going for a choke and keeping his front door wide open. Marines keep streaming in. We've got more Zetas are on the way but the gateway there is under attack. Mong might need a couple more cannons. He's got a Sittal of a there on the way in the back and something else on the way there in the back as well. Might be a cannon. Got some probes there moving to the side. Up to something. Not sure what he's up to. Wow, Zealot there gets cancelled. Now going for gateway number two. Cannon there protects the gateway quite well, but I do think Minchul can find an angle to attack the pylon at least. Or at least the pylon there on the bottom corner as they're on the way. He has on top of the pylon. They're back at home. He's got Stim on the way as the Academy has finished, and we've got a Factory on the way in the bottom corner. He's gonna try to play some sneaky stuff. Also got a Templus Arctic on the way there for Mong. Mong there definitely feeling the hurt, losing two structures already, and might lose structure number three that's being warped in. <coughs> Things definitely aren't looking pretty. He isn't spotting out the gate with their other corner though. Or is the cannon? That's two gateways actually. That's the gateway as well. The three gateways are on the way. Unit gets pulled into a cannon by accident. More cannons are finishing up there right next to the pylon. So very slowly, Mong is pushing Minchul away from hurting his structures. But he finds a couple structures that are on the side ready to kill them. So yeah, those gateways on the side are going to go down in the pylon as well. And that might actually supply stuff Mong if the Dark Templars are not fast enough with moving out and killing the marines. He does kill the pylon, so yes, supply stock he is. But the Dark Templars, close to finishing, are not going to get slowed down. Also got Double Robot down on the way. It looks like Mong took... I think he lost about 500 or 600 minerals in total, but it's not looking too bad. Maybe it is, because there's turrets there. Dark Templars going to get taken down there by the marines. Actually, one of them makes it out alive, and the other one does go down. Now Zealot are coming in as well. Dark Templar coming in as well there to assist the Dark Zealot. But in the end, it looks like the Marines and Tank that just spawned do win the fight. So he's going to push forward very slowly with the Tank onto those cannons while staying within the turret range while back at home. I think he's got no added on command center. Went for an engineering bay, got a couple supply depots, not a lot of money coming into the bank. But at least he's got all the stuff he needs though. Things looking pretty good. Ooh, he rolls a tank forward, but he's outside of turret range, and the cannon's finishing up now as well. Doesn't have vision of the probes. A very risky move that I maybe don't entirely agree with. Maybe playing it slow would have been a better choice. 
Mongi are playing very smart by putting the Dark Templar there inside the pathway into his base to intercept any unit trying to get in. And Minchul now actually pulling back his marines back home. Doesn't want them to walk into the Dark Templar and get one shot. Then the play is very safe here by continuing to push on with these units here and the turrets in the corner. Lost the SCV so he can't build any more turrets. He's going to try to do as much damage as he can while fortifying his base here back at home. Getting another command center now very late into the game. Mong has a way bigger economy but Mong also got his entire bolt order completely tangled up. Although the shield has finished, Reavers are on the way, he's managed to adapt as best as he could. Honestly, kind of interesting to see the way he's adapted to the situation. I'm sure most players would have kind of just died right there. I've seen some really good players die in that exact same situation, but Mong found a way to stay alive, stay afloat, and work his way up to having a lot of advanced technology ready to go for Reaver Shuttle Micro or to go for a draw. But Templar takes down the siege tank before the marines can save the tank. Still building tanks around the corner, but now he goes in with a surround with a lot of zealous and dark temples in the mix as well. This is going to get taken down, and that is actually going to hurt Mitchell quite a bit, because he invests a lot of money into getting this up and running. Tank that rolls four, but can't siege up, can't hit the probes, but the probes all do stay alive. He's got 48 of them, he's rich, with eight gateways, two robos, and all the technology he needs, or whatever want. So Reavers show they're flying across the map. Zealous are trailing behind him with the Dark Templar as well. Might try to break through the front door with a Reavers Carab shot there on the turret and then walk through with the Dark Templars. But he actually doesn't have tanks back at home yet and actually doesn't have a lot of protection back at home either. So the Reavers, they're on the side coming in. Gonna, oh, he's getting surrounded. He actually might have been a little bit too greedy there as we cannot pick up the Reavers. And the Marines clear everything out, just came from every single direction, keeps himself alive and away from harm. Loses one depot in the front, but doesn't lose much else. So Mong adapts after losing the Reavers, picks up Dark Templar, sends them across the hill, unloads them, and starts queuing up Psionic Storm. Tries to distract her in the front by setting his zealots in, pulling the Marines away. Now goes into the side, but there sees there's a couple turrets there already. He has to keep those Dark Temples away from the turrets, does so really, really well, although that one actually does walk into its death. Also has scans ready there in the back. Let's see what Mong is up to here back at home. Got triple shuttle, four shuttles, about six, uh, 12 zealots to four, four high Templars and a Reaver as well. That's a very strong drop combination. Minchil did just scan this, though I heard the scan sound coming in. So he probably knows this is what Mong is preparing for. Preparing to send in, which means of course that Minchul will have to start formulating an answer. The factory has returned back home. He's got two factories finished here as well, and he's got a dropship on the way for maybe a tank drop or putting something up on the hill. Now Minchul knows it's taking Mong a pretty long time before the shuttle group arrives on the scene. But here it is, comes in from a very good angle, actually unable to intercept them. We'll have to take things down as he starts unloading. Marines! Target fires. Oh! Very good target firing, but another... Oh, there's another shuttle there. Comes in, storms on the SCVs, kills only four... Another drop there already coming in. Oh, he actually killed everything. Just way too many units for Mintel to deal with. I think it was about 16, maybe even 20 Zealots. Shuttles just kept flying in and kept flying in. Mong just multitasked that one extremely well. Just kept flying in. Didn't even have to kill the SEDs. Just killed every single unit there on the scene. And that did the trick. A very well played first game there from both players actually. But Mintel being a little bit too... I don't want to say arrogant, but he tried something very funky and it looked like it was a little bit too funky, too spicy for consumption and it didn't quite work out as he had in mind. So now we're going into game number two between these two players. Score is 1-0 for Mong. Now let's see, how is Minchul going to crawl his way back into this best of set? 
So we got Mong on the Zerg. Just let me show it real quick after loading into the game. Mong is on the Zerg, your white Zerg, bottom right corner of the map. The colors are very similar, might be a little bit difficult to track. And because they played on melee, they're both yellow. And if, if the, the game is hosted on melee, everyone just shows up as yellow. It can be very confusing if you turn on the team colors, or if you have a situation where both colors of both players just look pretty much the same, white and pink. The colors are just very similar, and honestly, I hate this situation, because it's, it's kind of hard to keep track of everything happening on a minimap, but I'm gonna try to do my best. I'm gonna try to do my best, and I hope you can see it as well. Like, if I turn on team colors, both players are yellow. Downside of hosting on melee settings and not on top versus bottom settings. Okay, so Mong here starts out with a hatchery in the front. I kind of like it. Let's see how good Mong's Zerg against Protoss on fastest map really is. I haven't really seen it happen too much, but I think he's pretty good. I think he's pretty good. He has basically all the core fundamentals from normal maps. He's got the speed, the multitasking. He's got the knowledge, the understanding of the game. He should be pretty good. As long as he knows the fastest build orders for Zerk, which I believe he does because he's played a lot of fastest at this point. He should know the build orders. He should know what to do. But maybe he hasn't played it himself that much to actually be... Um, aware of all the different situations he can be up against. So it might spell trouble, it might also spell good news. Because maybe he's going to play so creative, so on point, that Minchil's going to have a really difficult time breaking the shell of this turtle Zerk. So Minchil here playing very defensive. Goes for a double cannon there in the front, next is in the back, gateway now coming up after the cannons. It is very, very, very defensive. Most of the time you've got Pylon in the front, gateway in the back, and then the two cannons. He swapped them around, went for cannons before the two, or well, the one gateway. Double gas, they're also on the way. Neither player really able to enter the other's base, except, of course, Minchil is already here. What I meant to say was, Mong can't really go across the map and enter Minchil's base, because Minchil has those cannons that are going to keep Mong away from gathering information for now. Maybe the Overlord is going to get in and get some information. Wait, he got the drone in. I'm blind. He got the drone in. Both players completely found each other. I am spreading fake news. They found each other. I just didn't see the difference on the minimap, so I... You know, it's already it's already affecting my ability to cast the game. Pink is just difficult to see at a quick glance on a minimap. He goes for triple hatchery added on in the back, because he sees that Minchul doesn't have anything to attack. So you might just rack it all up and go for the best possible economy you can possibly go for. That is by getting just a lot of hatcheries and only a single sunk there in the front because nothing is going to be knocking on that door to hurt him. No depth collectors are standing in line to hurt our little Zerk. Zerk is chasing around the probe as is usual. Double gas now coming in at 20 supply. Overlord is on the way. Double Overlord actually on the way. Sunk in the front now actually finishing up. Very late one. We got double Stargate there on the way there in the front. Keeping those Stargates out of Monk's vision. That Monk cannot prepare himself adequately for those Stargates. But Monk here is going to find them. I think he saw one Starport. Also one Stargate. So he's going to be able to adjust and adapt. So Minchel going for some very annoying air harassment or getting level 1 attack and level 1 attack. Or air and ground, actually. Also got a Siddle of a Dune on the way. No, we don't have robotics facilities here yet, though. Not anywhere to be seen just yet. Triple Gate with being added on as well. Might go for Corsair Zealot Frontal Attack. I think that's what he's aiming for. He's going to go for Corsairs to harass and kill Overlords. Be annoying, but we already have a lot of hatches in the back here and a lot of drones and minerals from Mong because he went for the very high hatchery amount without actually sunkening up in the front. 
Also got structures, panels being built here on the middle to reduce the distance to Mong space. Gonna be a lot of gateways on the middle here. Maybe even some robotics facilities and just crawl forward and attack the frontal choke there. Drone is still alive. We've got an overlord there being hunted down by double cores here. Double cores there being very annoying, very strong in taking down those overlords. Mong is supply blocked at the moment. Does have an overlord. Not yet queued up, not yet on the way. It's got a double evil chamber on the way for carapace and attack. Needle spine upgrade. Uh, Hydra speed is on the way. Courses they're finding overlords in the front. Hunt them down. Might turn this one deep colony into a spore colony to at least keep. Yeah, it's a spore colony. To keep the courses away from the overlord. So at least the overlord here has a safe haven, a safe spot. But it is kind of working in the sense that he is taking away side vision from Mong, which I believe is the core purpose of going for Corsairs pretty early on, although he's even building more of them. He's building more Corsairs. He might act. I'm still not entirely sure what he's going to go for, but we got Storm there on the way and also a Robotics there back at home being warped in right there. That's Robotics. So he's going to go for Storm Drops after the Corsair Harassment. But the question that I have in my mind right now is how many courses is he going to go for? He's got six of them and he isn't queuing any new ones up at the moment. No new courses has been queued up at the moment. So six might be the amount he wants. He just wants to take down overalls very quick, but Monk playing is very smart by protecting his overalls very well, except the one there on the side, except that one. He's got overall speed though, but the courses don't give a damn because they take it down really quickly. Six courses with level one attack, which isn't finished yet. But six Corsairs with level 1 attack do deal a lot of damage this early into the game. So he's got 101 supply now. Mong is on 63, 42 drones. That's a lot of drones for only 6, 7 minutes into the game. Only getting a Queen's Nest and a couple more hatcheries. He's feeling fine. He's feeling strong. He's got a pretty good amount of Hydra Lisks. He's got a pretty good amount of Sunkers in the front. He's got Lurker Espec finished. Lurkers are on the way. Morphing there in the front. Gonna protect the front. I don't think we've got any... We've got an observatory. We've got observers on the way as well. It looks like Mintel might have seen the eggs morphing there in the front with his Cortex. Yes, he's definitely seen them. Definitely has seen them. Supply is going up very quick. Now 59 probes, 50 drones from Mong. Mong is actually becoming very rich and Mintel is taking a very long time getting ready for an attack. He's getting ready, but it's taken a while. Wong are actually feeling lucky, feeling tricky, feeling frisky, moves forward, gonna try to harass and be annoying there on the middle. I think this Lurk is in a very offensive position, but we have an observer there um, somewhere on... It's still in production. He's got Templars, so we're just gonna storm to death and make an Archon. 160 supply almost. This is going very, very quick from Mintel here. The supplies going up very, very quick. Only eight minutes in, almost maxed out. Then got drops on the way as well. I believe I don't see shuttles. He's just gonna go in from the front. So level one attack finished up. Level two attack on the way. Four ground, and so are the armor upgrades on the way. He's got shuttle speed on the way. He's got observer speed on the way. A lot of upgrades are all on the way. Ready to break in through the front door, and he's gonna go. He's gonna go. The spore there might make it very difficult for the observer to actually detect the lurkers. Goes in too far. He saves the observer just in time, but he also realizes that this is a little bit too strong of a choke to break through. He needs observer vision range. He might need two observers actually. There's a lot of spores to on the scene, a lot of lurkers. He's not gonna break through. He should have gone for drops, space. He should have gone for drops. At this point, he realizes I should have gone for the goddamn drop and gone for the minerals. Because at this point, he's got a big army, but a big army cannot break through. It is physically incapable of breaking through this front line for now. Needs observer range, the more upgrades, and Mong is growing bigger and bigger. Now 63 drones, 930 into the game. Supply is not huge yet, but he's got a lot of spores for defensive purposes against Corsairs and probably against shuttles as well. It's going to be difficult to unload here. More drones being added on. He got 70 now. He's getting very rich. He got seven hatches in the back, one in the front for a total of eight. There's not much on the corners yet. No vision on the corners. He had to keep all of his hatcheries back at all his overlords back in his base. 
because the Corsairs kept hunting them down. They're still flying back and forth trying to find Overlords. So one old one zerking on the corner here. You might move it up towards the gas to have a drop dodging opportunity and ability. First drop there, being prepared. We've got some Templars being loaded up. It's a lot of Templars actually. And I think he loaded up about six of them. Also getting six Robos at the same time on the middle to start the river push. You got about 11 Gavis on the middle. He's got three Gavis there back at home. Still two Stargates. Getting double Nexus here as proxy for more gas income. Drop there, prepared to go in. Goes in with the front first to go for a frontal distraction attack while going in with a drop there from the bottom side. But Mong is paying attention. Mong notices it immediately. And the very second attack attempt doesn't quite achieve much. And here you see the problem with having that sporter in the front with the lurks behind. The observer very easily if you don't have observer vision range very easily flies a little bit too close to the spore and of course gets taken down as you can see right there it got taken down really really quick got observer range there on the way i cannot quite get the description there when i hover on the top corner i'm not getting the description of what it is it's just there's too much on the list look at how many things he's upgrading Level 1 is getting a Hylodisk, level 2 weapon attack, getting a level 2 carapace, getting level 1 melee attack for Zerkling, getting consume, getting a defiler, getting air attack, getting Zerkling attack speed. Pretty much everything there is on the list, he's getting it. Also, I think he's got overall transportation finished up. Getting even more hatcheries, getting more sports. He's just building everything really quick. I kind of like Monk's Zerk, but I also have to admit. Minchil might not have gone for the best build order. He has a lot of different build orders. I think he's got like 50 different build orders and methods of attacking you. And it kind of looks like he's always trying a different strategy. He's always improvising something fun and unique. And sometimes the fun and unique stuff, it doesn't really work. He's very good. He's very, very good. And that, I think, is also a reason why he keeps trying a lot of different kinds of things. Comes in, finds the perfect angle. Templars are on the scene. Templar there storms. Takes down most of the drones there. He took down a lot of drones. I think he took down about 42. Mong there not hot keying his drones for some reason. Maybe he did. Maybe he just didn't notice a drop coming in until the very last possible moment. So he gets knocked down from about 80 to 33. Now back to 45, 55, recovering very quickly because he has 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 9, and 11 hatcheries there in the back. He, it's not a very high amount of hatcheries, 11 hatcheries, but it should be enough in a Zerg against Protoss when there's only 13 minutes in. He might need a couple more as the game goes on. Queens on the sides, I like it. Level 2 upgrades have finished up, killing level 3 upgrade already. Minchel goes for the frontal attack, got level 1 armor, 2 attack. Let's try to break through, observers have observer vision range. Mong is now back on 55 drones, he's gonna have to move to the front there to at least try to ensnare and slow down the reaver progression. The reavers are hurting pretty bad while he's trying to recover from that drop he got hit by. Another ensnare there on the way, he's going for it. Not yet, not yet. He's getting Guardians first. He might ensnare the Corsairs in the air. They're going to try to kill his Guardians. A couple of Guardians there finish up. Three more are on the way. He's got a couple Zergings and Hiders on the way there as well. He's very low on money. Very low on money. Forces are coming in. Disruption Raptor on the units on the roll ground. Gets the Plague uh, Gets an ensnare off. Doesn't Plague yet. Needs more energy. There's the plague on the Corsairs. Beautiful little disco combination there on the Corsairs. I like the color flashing. It's a disco. They're having fun. They're partying pretty hard. Plague on the Reavers as well. Plague on the Reavers as well. I like what this. I like this looks. Looks really good. Looks really good. I might use it as a as a thumbnail later on. This looks really pretty. Another disruption raptor on the spore to allow the Corsairs to hunt down the Guardians. But the Guardians retreat further deeper into the base. But the front here is. Falling pretty quick, but now we've got some Mulelisks, they're coming in hot. There's a car come there, though, to fight up the Mulelisks. So he goes in for the Mutamicro instead, repositions himself to the side there. Zealots are penetrating through into the bottom corner there. Reavers in the front are killing everything that's coming out. Zerks are coming in as well, without speed though. They do have level 1 attack, and they do have attack speed as well, but not movement speed yet. 
these movement speed are still on the way. So more plague there on the reavers. Pretty much every single reaver except the two in the back there have been plagued. Minchil and Mong are playing their hearts out and Minchil has broken through the choke but Mong is on the pushback. Now 62 drones, he's recovered pretty well but he's low on minerals. His gas is fine though but he's low on minerals. Archon in the front there, doesn't give a damn, goes and chases those units pretty quick. Courses are coming in as well to finish off the remaining Guardians. Now the Hydra's coming from the side to the front, ready to take down those weakened and plagued Reavers. But the, the, scarabs, the Scarabs are just taking pretty much everything down. But in the end, the Hydra's do win the fight, but more Reavers already rolling in. More Dragoons coming from behind as well. Minchel's production is just on point. He's got 10, 13, 15 gabies on the middle with which he's producing from and 6 robotics with which he's producing reavers. He's not going for any more drops. He believes he's got this push. He believes he's got it. He hit a pretty good storm drop on Mong earlier and he thinks he can push and win and finish the game. But Mong looks like he's recovered enough, just enough. His supply is pretty low, but the Guardians are pushing back very well, and the plagues that are continuously coming in keep softening up and reducing the HP off those Dragoons and Reavers just enough for Mong to keep on surviving and to keep on surviving. He's a survivor. Although, although, I called it a little bit too early. Oh, there's a Dark Swarm. Dark Swarm there, really good against Dragoons. Not that great against Reaver Scarabs, though. Reaver Scarabs don't give a damn about Plague, I mean Dark Swarms. They do give a damn about Plagues, because Plagues hurt quite a bit. There are about 9, 10, maybe 11 Reavers there in total on the scene, pushing forward with the support of some Dragoons and Corsairs. Mong is being pushed into a corner further and further, he's trying to stay alive, but this is looking really, really dicey. This is looking exceptionally dicey. I don't know if Mong can stay upright and survive this one because units just keep coming in from Minchul. Minchul's just pushing forward very, very strongly. Observers moving forward as well. We got Lurkers morphing within range of the Reavers though. This is so very controlled from Minchul. Templar rolls forward. Gonna try this. Oh! That would have ended the game. That would have ended the game. We've got the Templar going down to a Lurker shop of while it is in the animation of starting a storm on the drones and Mong didn't dodge, drops coming in there as well but getting taken down. Now we've got Reavers Mutilus there in the backside. Re Lurkers in the front are doing a little bit of damage. Now we've got Immutus coming in but the Corsairs don't give a damn. Corsairs is there to protect the Reavers and the Dragoons also there to protect the Reavers. It's mostly the Reavers that are pushing and doing the hard work while everything else is protecting them. There's a beautiful plague there from Mong coming in. Very quick one. Very well placed, softens up a couple more units. Minchil still pushing forward. He's he's basically in the middle of the base by now. He's basically in the middle of the base, taking down everything very, very slowly. The Guardians might just change the fate of this game. And so the Varus in the back there are ready to support the Guardian who are taking down all these units there. The Guardians have pretty good upgrades, I believe. One, two upgrades. That's actually pretty damn good. Whereas the Corsair that just died, I couldn't see the upgrade. He's on 222 for the air. He's on 222 for the ground as well. Might have level 3 attack there. They're level 3 attack indeed. But Mong, who's been upgrading non stop the entire game, is level 3 character base, 2 melee attack there on the Zerflings. And his Hydras are maxed out on upgrades as well. He's been upgrading very, very consistently, despite being a little bit low on money for the last 8 minutes, maybe? 5 minutes? He's recovered though, 62 drones in total. He uses about 10 drones to build new structures in the front. It might hurt the economy over time. Guardians on the high ground, still getting taken down by Dragoons because Dragoons are pretty damn good against Guardians, even if you put the Guardians on the sides. Sunkins are morphing, more Guardians are finishing up. He's got a, the fighter there ready to play. Plague's on a call of Dragoons. Templars are there as well. Templars storms on the Guardians as they finish up. So they have to move away. The Varus are taking care of the Corsairs, but the Dragoons are taking care of the Varus. Very, very dicey action pack situation, but there seems to be a small little moment of rest as both players lick their wounds and recover from the situation. Also, it looks like. Oh no, I'm. Oh. This is what happened. This is what happened. He killed probes, and because of the similar colors on the minimap, 
I couldn't see the overwatch moving out. So beautiful counterattack there from Mong that I'm gonna have to look back at later on in the game. But he killed Mintel's economy. Pretty, pretty great move there. I think he got him down from 80 to 44, now 49, which actually means that if Mong defends this wave, he's gonna be fine and have himself a little moment to breathe recover and get his economy back in order. That is if he manages to revive his push. Because the push is pretty damn strong. The supply is pretty damn low. Minjol has got 50 more supply. Oh, there's the Zerkins coming in, getting us around on everything. Reduce oh the plagues that have been stacking up over time do allow him to reduce the amount of units here to pretty much just seven or eight units remaining that are now forced to pull back because Mintel cannot afford to lose any more units because his economy is recovering. He had no production for a little while. He doesn't have an army. Well, he has a small little army, but it's not a big army. And Mong there pushing his luck, pushing forward, thinking he's got an opportunity to maybe break through into the middle. He's gonna return back home as well because he's on 52 drones. He's been pulling drones off the minerals to build new sunkens and hatcheries in the front here pretty much non-stop over the past four minutes. So his drone count went from 75 down to 52. He might need a couple more drones on the minerals because he only has 52 on the minerals and about 30 of them on the gas. Maybe 27 on the gas, I think. I think it might actually be about 21 because the bottom ones are not filled up and the bottom, the top one is not filled up either. He isn't sending new drones to his minerals, which is hurting his recovery a little bit, but at least he is um, strengthening up the frontal part. The lurker drop that I missed earlier has been cleaned out. I'm really going to rewatch that one. It's just completely and purely missed it because the colors on the minimap are difficult to differentiate when I'm looking at it. Another lurker drop there, though, moving across the map. It might get spotted out, though, by this small little proxy base there that's mining gas for Minchul. He might get spotted out. Got a drop there coming in from the bottom side. There's some hiders on the hill. There's not much in between, though. So he's going to fly in. Mong might not respond to this one. He is not responding. In fact, he's responding a little bit late, though. Managing to save one group, two groups. It's just Dragoons. There's no Templars in there. Luckily, 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 there's no Templars in there. It's just Dragoons, but the Dragoons are hurting. They're taking down Spores. Not a whole lot of damage. Five, four Spores is something. Rising at number five, that's number five, moves away out of the Lurker range. We take down number six and number seven. Takes down number six. So he's doing a pretty good job there. Also, here in the front, a large army of Archons. Templars and Reavers. And another drop there back at home. Coming in. They might be... Mong is not paying attention. Mong is not paying attention. He's occupied there back at home. Oh, what? Oh, that's very interesting. I've never seen this one before. I know you can place uh, ghosts behind this, but I didn't know you could do this. This is very interesting. It's He's, he's not going to kill the gas, though. He's not going to kill the gas because Dragoons have arrived back at home to save the base. But that is a very interesting little interaction. I knew you could place a ghost here and then nuke from here. I've seen some players do it. They've got a, a ghost here and then a nuke on the Nexus. I've seen some players do it. Difficult to do, but it's so satisfying when it works. Yeah, anyway, Minchul protects the minerals once again, and Mong protects his own minerals once again, although the sh oh, he's flying away. He's flying away from the shuttles with his devourers. Templars are on the scene. Templars storms Mong not paying attention. Down to 15, 12, 11, 10, 8. 8 drones. 8 drones. That was a disaster. That was an absolute disaster. Is it possible to recover from this situation? Reavers are pushing in the front very, very slowly. We've got the proxy base here on the top corner. Got taken down by an overlord drop from earlier. 
Minkle. Minkle is actually a little bit low on gas. A little bit low on gas. Which is also hurting him a little bit. And a couple more Hydras are pushing forward very slowly, just trying to do a little bit more extra damage there on the top corner of Minchel's base. Minchel kind of getting distracted by this. After hitting that absolutely monumental drop, he's getting distracted. Also, he's got a lot of Corsairs, which is now thrown away. He, he saves them. I think he should throw them away. I think they're eating up his supply, and they're allowing Mong, who is who shouldn't be allowed to recover from this, it is allowing him to recover. As you can see right here, he's got all of Guardians and Mutus and the Varus in the back. He's now back on 37 drones. He's just building drones non-stop, not really building anything else at the moment. He's just trying to recover, and Mintel is giving him the time to do so. Maybe not on purpose, maybe on purpose, I don't know. But Mong is recovering because Minchel just isn't going for the... Oh, there he goes. Here he comes. He's going for the attack. He was waiting for the shuttle drop. There's Templars on the scene. Templars... Drones are dodging. Oh! Ah! He... Oh! Okay. Okay. He's once... Ugh. Beautiful storms. Beautiful storms. But painful to watch. Very painful drop. Very, very painful drop. And another small little Overlord dropper on the corner to kill the Cybercore, kill the Templars Archive. Disruption, <laughs> disruption webs everywhere to slow down. Zerking, but Zerking is so fast, he's gonna go over some pylons there. Mong is just doing a great job there of slowing Minchul down after Minchul keeps hitting him very, very hard. Luckily, he's got detection there on the scene, so the burrow there not really working out that well for him. Kill the Templars Archive, kill the Cybercore. Mong is keeping Minchil occupied. Again, while he's trying to recover from losing his drones, again. Once again, back on 35 drones, again. Uh, still a lot of Corsairs there from Minchil. Not sure if those Corsairs are actually getting that much value out of them. A lot of supplying Corsairs, which aren't really able to fight because there's so many spores all around the base. He got the Vars as well. He's mostly using them to escort those shuls in. Comes in. Drones are once again not running away. Mong is slow with his responses, but there's a temple on the scene. Dodges the storm this time around, though. Still loses about seven or six, maybe even eight drones. So still a pretty painful storm. This is Templar sort of more energy for another storm there, though. Killed seven. No energy for another storm. Minchil feels he's done enough damage with the drop, so he goes in for a frontal push. Lurkers are on the scene. I see an observer there on the side as well. Plagues are coming down to protect those lurkers. There's a plague as well. So Dark Swarms plague on those units. Great job with the monk once again defending with ease without effort. The Corsairs which are eating up all the supply are still flying back and forth. Not really achieving all that much. We've got some units that are coming up on the top side of the hill. Mong are we slowly getting control. Extra vision as well. Got a the filer there ready as well for a Lake or Dark Swarm on the Lurker that's right there on the hill. They're up there flying into the bottom corner. It's going to get spotted out by the Lurker and the Defiler. He's got a Queen there as well for Ensnare to slow this down. Is it going to work? Is it going to work? Comes in, turns around, goes back in. Mong is ready to snipe this down. Is not dodging the Storm. Kills it. Ooh, -wee. one Templar gets out, one Templar hits the storm, and he gets, once again, I think he killed a pretty good amount of drones. So Mong, they're trying to play it risky, doesn't quite pay off, he could have lost everything again. Mong, oh wait, I hear something, I hear the sound of something. It's a lurker on the low ground, another dark swarm, ready to take down those cannons all by its lonely self. And Mong, Minchil just takes care of it with his single disruption web. Very cute, very cute way of dealing with the Lurker under the Dark Swarm. Dark Tremples are on the way to kill it, but I think they've got the same issue of being unable to fight under a disruption web, but they just kill the Lurker instead. This game has really slowed down into a very... Basically, we no longer have the frontal mass attacks. You've got small little fights happening on the sides. Very small little fights. 
With Corsia is flying back and forth, messing about. Drop here though. Big drop comes in. No ensnare. Disruption webs on the Hydras. Tries to take it all down. Is not dashing the storm again. Hits everything. Hits everything. Bong just refuses to dodge the storms on their coming in. He just refuses to move his drones. He refuses, and it's a little bit frustrating. Because he was playing so well, I would have wanted to see him just dominate this game. But he just is not dodging the storms. I don't know why he isn't dodging the storms, but he just isn't dodging them. Once again, on 40 drones. Minzel is repairing yet another drop. Corsairs are still flying back and forth. Got an Arbiter there as well. I really want to just see him go with a frontal mass attack or something. Or a mass unit unload there on the corner. It's just these drops. He's just going for drops. And he's killing drones every single time. He's keeping Mong basically stuck in an eternal loop of rebuilding his drones. But it isn't killing him. And neither is Mingjil actually making any progress at the moment. He hasn't made any progress. He's trying a lot of funny stuff. And pretty good stuff in my opinion. But there is just no progress. Although he is setting up a very strong cannon and arbiter contain all around Mong's base. But do keep in mind and remember Minchil was had progressed all the way up to here with his army. He was sitting right here with his army. And since then he's been pushed out and being relegated to sending in shuttle drops from the sides with hopes of killing something. Comes in once again, drones not running away. Is there a Templar? There's a Templar. Templar gets a storm. Templar storms on most of the drones. Most of the drones once again do go down, although 45 of them do stay alive. Not a Templar there on the scene though, tries to run away from this one. Templar can't storm, so Templar goes down and it looks like Mong actually only loses 35. Or was it 25? One of the two, he lost somewhere in between 25 and 35 drones. So instead of getting reset back to the start of having only 10 drones or 8 drones, like the past couple of drops, he gets reset back to 45, now 67. So he's doing pretty well with recovering. Basically, he's in a cycle of rebuilding drones, but every single time the amount of drones he keeps alive is a little bit higher than the last time. So at some point, he will be at... 70 drones after a drop, and that is when he is able to strike. Once again, so many Corsairs and a lot of probes. The, I, 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 I like Corsairs, but I also hate them. I hate them, I hate them, I hate them because of this exact situation. Minchel has about 20 Corsairs, now maybe 15. He just cannot push. He can't push at all. He's got no pushing power. Yet yeah, this is 20 Corsairs in total all over the map. He's just physically incapable of pushing forward. Drop comes in. There's a lot of Corsairs. Gets the ensnare. Everything is slowed down, but he can't snipe the shuttle. There's... Ooh, storms. Kills a couple. Kills a bunch. Let's get a second storm. Kills more. The disruption map on the workers is very cute, manages to keep the Templars alive for long enough to get the storms off, but the storms don't kill that many, and he's... Well, as I said before, every single time Mon gets dropped, he keeps more and more drones alive, because now he actually is storm dodging. Not a drop there. Nope, nope, it's Corsairs. And of course, it's very slowly fly away after getting a single kill. There's a drop there, ready to go in, along with the Corsairs. Four shuttles in total. Couple Templars in there. Two Corsairs, four shuttles, ready to go in. Distracting in the front with a beautiful disruption web that actually doesn't do much. Drones are returning to the minerals, though. Drop is coming in. Drones have to run away. Mong not paying attention. Mong has to run away for his life. Has to keep those drones alive. Dodges the storm. There's a double storm there, though, on the scene. Keeps 41 drones alive. 44. Second storm doesn't go up. There's a third. There's a second storm. This time around, it's 43 drones that do stay alive. 43 drones. Very slow with the dodge there, though. It's very hard to spot the shells coming in when there are so many units here on the bottom corner that you have got there. So more workers burrowing up a little bit closer to the hive. Repositions them a little bit. Oh, Minjol is finally 
returning to the first method of approach of Reaver pushing through the front door. This is what I wanted to see. He's killed the Corsairs, he's realizing the Corsairs simply are not working out. I can't see the Corsairs anywhere on the map. He's going back to the Goons, Reavers and Arbiters. No Templars though, it's well, one Templar, two Templars in the front, but he's not making any new ones. Mong now back on 50 drones, his economy is low down in the dumps, but he's got units all over the place, so it's not as bad as it looks. Dark Swarm comes out, but the Reavers don't give a damn. They don't give a damn, should have used the Plague in my opinion to at least hurt everything, because now we have a pretty bad situation where the Dark Swarm is actually protecting Mitchell's units from harm. It's actually protecting them from the Sunkens, which is gonna help him push through this entire front portion under the cover of the Dark Swarm, when we've got so many Reavers, Arbiters and Dragoons there pushing through the front door. This is looking pretty bad, because Mong didn't plague, he used Dark Swarm, and more Dark Swarms are coming out which are not going to do anything except help Minchil. These Dark Swarms are just terrible. They're helping Minchil kill everything in the front without taking any damage whatsoever. This is the very last thing I wanted to see. Wong killing himself with Dark Swarms. Dark Swarms can be amazing to help you get damage down, but when there's Reavers, this many Reavers, Dark Swarms are not going to help your Zerglings kill anything at all. It goes in, but nope, everything is dead. Reavers kill everything really quickly. Another plague there. Oh, is, is Mong gonna die like this after surviving for so long? Beautiful stage there on the Guardians is gonna keep him stuck in the air. The plagues, the, the Dark Swarms do eventually end though. Those four stages on the drones. He, there was a. Is it a Holus? Oh, there's a storm! Oh, this one. The one Templar underneath everything, kills everything, goes for a recall for funsies. And the game is just over very quickly at the end. It took like one minute of pushing and Mintel ended it. Even though the one minute of pushing was kind of enabled and made possible by Mong himself. Because Mong should not have used Dark Swarm there. Dark Swarm just absolutely made that push way too easy. Way too easy. I mean, that was one of the easiest pushes I've seen in my life because he just, he was invulnerable to everything being thrown his way. I think Plagues would have just done such an amazing job of killing everything. Plagues would have done an amazing job, but he kept using Dark Swarms. Not sure why. Not sure why, but it didn't work out. That's game number two. Score is one to one. We've already been in this video for 47, maybe almost 84 minutes. Uh, 48, not 84, 48 minutes. So I'm going to call it a day here. And we're going to continue with the next games in the next video. Scores one to one. Hope you enjoyed this these two games so far. It was a, it was a nice Zerg against Protoss. Honestly, Mong impressed me. But he also made me kind of. I was I was molding. I was molding watching those drops and the drones not dodging them. Thank you for watching. It was RG for RGB TV, and I hope you return next time when we continue Mong against Minchel in part number two.